Once again, let me just go through it. You're 17 years old, you go to a party in Wisconsin, you're falsely accused of sexual assault, right? With a, with a, with a young lady or whatever it was. And, and you um, get arrested. You have, you have an attorney that wasn't up to par, and now you're incarcerated and you're in jail. You've been in jail now 10 years, right? In your 10th year, something happened. Tell me about what happened in the 10th year. So my conviction was reversed. Uh, my conviction was reversed with the help of the Wisconsin Innocence Project. And they unanimously ruled that my conviction should be reversed and that I should either be retried with the evidence that the police withheld from us or I should be released. I was released. Yeah, what was that evidence that the police withheld? It was a witness statement that was like, look, these dudes didn't do that. I was around the entire time. And that's what was withheld from us. <laughs> I, wow. So... There was a witness clearly saying you didn't do it. They would not produce the witness. You go to jail for 10 years. Tell me how the Wisconsin Innocent Project uh, were able to discover and find this witness and get this all done. So actually, look, it, it was it was me, actually, who was able to, 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 Even to better. find it. Right. So I had an old salesman at the time. This is an old white dude who was there serving two life sentences. He had about, he was in for about 18 years. And I remember, you know, I would get on the phone and talk to my family at night and, and just try to, they didn't get it, right? They're like, man, how do you get 28 years for, for a case where the only evidence is an accusation? So as I'm trying to talk them to, through this, my, my cellmate is listening, you know, to this conversation. So he tells me, we have a conversation after, after me, him hearing me talk to my family. He's like, look, let me see the paperwork in your case and stuff like that. So we started to go through it and he would ask me questions much like how my attorney was supposed to ask me when learning about the case. So there was a witness statement in there, and the witness basically gave three, a three-sentence statement. Like, look, I seen the black guys and their friends, they were hanging around, and, and I saw them leave at the end of the night. The guy was like, look, who is this guy? And I started to jog back my memory. It was a young man that I was playing video games with throughout the night. This was a big dorm party. There was people everywhere on every floor, but the mainstay was this young man who saw us in and throughout the party the entire night. Mm. So that's when the ball started to roll to locate where this guy was at. When he was located, he's like, look, I don't know what else to offer. I gave you guys a, a written two-page statement already. That's how we found out that it was never overturned to us. And there's a lot more legs to it, but I know we don't have yeah. Yeah. Time, time, but it's, it's, it's a, I shudder right now, I, I, just to think about what if, right? What if I never got to that statement, right? I would be released last year, February of 2019. Hmm. Well, well, what's amazing about you, and this is why, you know, I've been I've been slow walking you because I, I know I know I know you want me to take the brakes off you, but I've been slow walking you because I, I believe you cannot you can't get to the joy until you know something about the sorrow. It won't mean right. as much, right? So here you are. Have, having gone through this and this incredible story you just told us about yeah. finding this witness, somehow the witness mm -hmm. gets found and somehow, the, you know, the, 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 the whole situation legally gets adjudicated. And you end up getting released from prison. And here's the part I've been waiting to get to. Yeah. You have the nerve after the storm is over to go to law school. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I wish it was that quick. But the reality is, I got out in 2017. Um, well, I got out in 2007. Battered, broken, young man with a 10-year gap in his resume. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, through the encouragement of my family, I sought counseling and therapy, which really is the the, the 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 linchpin and the reason why I was able to channel that frustration and anger to get me to where I am right now. So I got out. I enrolled in junior college, and I graduated from there two years later. I, then I, I, I took uh, 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 I took on my bachelor's degree, graduated three years after that. Then I made it into law school. So this was a process. This was a process of just me getting out with what I went yeah. in, with, which well, was a high school diploma. No, it's 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 it, it it it's inspiring to be able to put you on TV to mm -hmm. show all of the people who are watching who think that because they have a past or a mistake or some blemish on their record mm -hmm. that you cannot outlive, you know, what you've done. 
and you know, you show us tonight that it can be done. What's interesting about you is that you're also participating now in the New York Innocent Project, is that right? Yeah, so, so actually, I, uh, when I graduated law school, I clerked in the same circuit that overturned my conviction first. That was the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. I left there and I started to work at the Innocence Project where I worked for close to two years. I left the Innocence Project in 2017 and I started my own firm and now I have offices in a couple different states along with New York. It's a powerful thing, man. I hope, I know, I know you, you know, you said you have a book coming out. So I know, I know you have a sense of your story, mm -hmm. um, but, but I hope that you never, and that the people around you never let you forget how mm -hmm. truly of, of a miracle it is. Yet yeah. you're sitting in that office and wearing that tie and that suit and have that law degree on the wall. Um, yeah. I'm reminded of what something says in the scripture, what they meant for evil, you know, God works it for our good. Yeah. And, um, brother, you are a sitting, walking, breathing miracle. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, and I know that too. And I don't take that lightly as well that, that you know, cause there was a lot of young men that I came to know while helping them with their case. And I realized that, you know, this, when people talk about systemic, that's what we talk, we're not talking about on the face of it. We're talking about the, the underneath, right? And yeah. I saw so many young brothers pleading guilty just to get out the county jail, only to return a year later because they had 10 years of probation that they knew they were not gonna be able to complete. No, it's powerful. So listen, I got, I got two more questions to ask and one at a time. Give me, okay. give, me, give me 20 second answers to both of them, all right? All right. Here's my, here's my first question. What do you know now that you wish you had known then? Um, look, I, I, wish, I wish they would have really taught us that the migrant workers in our history books were stolen slaves from Africa. I wish we would have been taught and given the raw about what uh, racism and unjust equality, financial segregation, and all of that was as a kid. So some kids out of my class, out of my era, could have devoted their lives to replacing some of those folks that we now have making decisions that directly impacted us. I wish I would have had an honest conversation. Give me, give me on to the next question. I'm running out of time. Here's the next question. Give me a very short answer on this one. Here it is. I'm a, I'm a lawyer. It's hard. I know. I know. You can do it. I believe in you. All right. Come on. Short answer. What do you believe? What do I believe? Yeah. I believe that we shall and we have overcome. And I believe that we will continue to push this thing to what, what, what real equality looks like and feels like. Mm. That's what I believe. That's good. I, I'll take all of that. Listen, Jared, you are, you are a gift to us all and you remind us of the resilience of black people. You know, folks are watching the show tonight. People are tweeting. One viewer has said, there's a lot of innocent black men in jail and we need prison reform. And that's part of your work and part of your legacy. And uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, attorney Jared Adams. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.